Welcome to day four of More Mana. I'm still Pastor James, so let's continue to dive into the Great Commission. Again, Great Commission, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Greek word, verb translated go is actually not a command, but a present participle. It means going. The only command in the entire Great Commission is make disciples. We further define that when teach all nations and baptizing, but Jesus said, while you are going, make disciples of all the nations. While you are going. So no matter where we are, we should be witnesses for Jesus Christ and seek to win others to him. Now, the term disciples was the most popular name for the early believers. Being a disciple meant more than being a convert or a church member. An apprentice might be a more equivalent term. A disciple attached himself to a teacher and identified with them, learned from them, and lived with them. He learned not simply by listening, but also by doing. See, our Lord called 12 disciples and taught them so that they may be able to teach others. A disciple then is one who has believed on Jesus Christ and expresses faith, this faith, by being baptized. He remains in the fellowship of the believers that he might be taught the truths of the faith. He is then able to go out and win others and teach them. This was the pattern of the New Testament church. And in this gospel, a disciple is both a learner and a follower. A disciple takes Jesus as his teacher and learns from him, and a disciple also follows Jesus. The life of the disciple is different because of his attachment to Jesus. The master is not given a command that will merely secure nominal adherence to a group, but one that will secure a wholehearted commitment to a person. In the first century, a disciple did not enroll in such and such a school with such and such a teacher. Jesus' disciples are people for whom a life has been given in ransom and who are committed to the service of the master. The central responsibility of the disciples is to reproduce themselves, to make more disciples. The activities go, baptize, teach, essentially describe how a disciple is made. Disciple originally designates one who followed an entrant master as Jesus' disciples had done. But since Jesus was about to depart this world, the term disciple took on more metaphorical meaning. One now follows Jesus by understanding and obeying his teaching. If the message of Jesus is to reach all the nations, the disciples will obviously have to go to them. The essential commission is not tell people about Jesus. It's not preach your, the gospel. It's not grow your church. It's not make converts. Jesus' commission assumes all these, but goes deeper, commanding that we make disciples. To make disciples is to lead new believers to maturity so they understand and follow Jesus and eventually become leaders too. By making disciples, the church stays strong over generations. Jesus commands his followers to disciple all nations. Jesus came for Israel first, but also for the world and for every people and nation. At first, the disciples went to Israel, but soon they would appear before Gentiles and kings. Matthew often says that the kingdom of Christ belongs to everyone who believes and bears fruit. Now, the early church had difficulty grasping this. Jesus said, make disciples of the nation and you will be my witnesses in Ju Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. But in the beginning, the apostles hardly budged from Jerusalem. Indeed, they generally stayed close to the temple and the center of Jerusalem. To be sure, they preached with power and healed many and conducted themselves with great courage whenever the authorities threatened them. But the Lord had to raise up men like Stephen, Philip, and Paul to thrust the church out to the Gentiles. We are much the same, if not worse. We know about the Great Commission, but sometimes hesitate to share our faith, even with our close friends, let alone venturing more radical paths. The scope of the Great Commission explains how this work of Jesus commands his disciples to make the disciples of all nations in the same way the Son of Man compels all peoples, nations, and men of every language to worship him. God has designed the Great Commission to reach every nation, tribe, and tongue and in order to stimulate and contribute the climatic moment when Jesus rules over the creation. 
That means that the Great Commission not only rehearses this future time by taking the gospel to every nation, it also pays a part in it by helping to convert people from every nation into worshipers for that final day. Join us tomorrow as we dive into how we make disciples.